Hey, welcome back to another Out of Spec Reviews video. I am here at Magna in Michigan, just north of Detroit near Pontiac, or maybe it's in Pontiac, but we're with Magna at the M1 concourse where they do a lot of their testing and development and demonstrations. Uh, you may recognize these trucks. Kyle was up here driving in the winter in the deep snow, and it was awesome. He drove on a frozen lake uh, up north, and I was definitely jealous. So I'm excited to finally see Magna things in person. Got an ID4 right there, where of course they make the uh, front motor. And coming down the line is the Tesla Model S, not plaid, but it was the tri-motor before there was a plaid. Super cool video Kyle did with that car as well. I'm here taking in everything all at once. They're demonstrating so many different products they make, four different OEMs, and even a vehicle they make, which is right over there coming up. Where is it? Yep, right there. The Arc Fox Alpha T. So I'm gonna give you a tour of basically the facility, at least everything I'm allowed to see, and all the products that they're working on and demonstrating and showing off here at Magna Tech Week. I'll start off by walking you down the line. This is not actually something they're showing off. This is just something they're towing, basically a 10,000 pound load on their electric towing vehicles. Um, these are Magna Intelligent Force. They have the beam, the E-beam that kind of drops in. And these are battery electric trucks showcasing basically the electric capabilities of towing. Of course, we're on a track. And so we won't be able to see things like range and stuff like that, but we've done a lot of testing with towing and electric vehicles and range. This is the Arc Fox Alpha T. It's really cool, it's from China. It has an interesting design to it uh, in a good way. I mean, I just, I love that thing. Uh, this is the Tesla Model S, um, the E1 demonstrator as they call it. So it's all wheel drive, battery electric of course, um, but instead of the two motors, which this car came with, it has three motors, three of their E-drive units. Um, so one at the front axle, two at the rear, um, joined with a submation gearbox and clutch-based torque vectoring. So that's pretty sweet. Right up here, the ID4 all wheel drive, this is where they showcase their rare earth materials free front motor that they provided to the MEB platform. So of course ID4, but others as well. And then here's another Magna Intelligent Force truck, 408 kilowatts of power, just a total beast in an age where electric trucks are starting to make more appearances. So coming into the main area, let me show you everything they have on display here. I'm gonna walk you through as much as possible, not quite all in one take because I'm taking it in as I'm going. So let me first tell you about all these drivetrain components, which you see in a lot of electric cars nowadays and a lot more to come. Immediately over here in the corner, we have the dedicated hybrid drive DHD Duo. I love all the things they're telling us. <laughs> Basically how, how this works is it's a hybrid drive system with two motors and they'll actually both work, um, one for like regen, one for traction. A lot of different opportunities with this for battery, or sorry, hybrid electric vehicles. And then over here is the hybrid transmission for the 48 volt systems. So this is like a, something you can put in like, you know, uh, Mercedes has a lot of 48 volt hybrid technology. And the perk of this is the transmission built in it only adds a little bit of bulk around the edges. So it's easier to fit into an existing type of vehicle without completely re-engineering like the engine block. A lot of vehicles run into the issue where the engine block is basically too long. And so they'll have to short the engine block or re-engineer the transmission to squeeze in a mild hybrid system. This makes it much easier. Over here, we have basically electric drive components, the E-drive systems as they call it which you've seen in the front of like the Volkswagen ID4. And they can sport different levels of power. This one right here, 160 kilowatt for hybrid or battery electric. Right here you have low CE, which is cost efficient. So this is 80 kilowatt peak power from rare earth materials, free electric motor. So this is on the front of the Volkswagen ID4. Over here is the E-beam. This is essentially what's in the trucks outside that we just saw earlier. And this is like almost like a drop-in place system where the motors are integrated into the E axle. And this is crazy because you can fit like all your existing suspension and brakes and hub. You don't have to like reconfigure everything to make this work. There's a lot of different opportunities for this. They have also a 
So 238 kilowatts floating E-beam for three quarter ton and one ton trucks. Two integrated speeds, so you can have a two speed gearbox kind of like Tycon, which fun fact, they actually build the two speed transmission for Tycon. And this is for especially off-road um, applications. So whereas Tycon takes the two speed application for reaching higher top speeds and also giving you a bit more torque down low, this one accentuates the torque down low more for off-roading applications. So basically you could have an off-road gear completely separate from your normal driving gear. And then you have the two E-machines for ultra high power. This is like two motors and the coaxial in the, in the middle. And this is like what you put in <laughs> kind of like a plaid basically. You could have two motors on the back and two on the front if you want. And then you can have torque vectoring therein. So really interesting system. Cool to see the cutaway of all the components inside. And I, yeah, it's, this is fascinating, like science fair gone crazy. And then over here is the steel battery enclosure. Magna is really focusing on building battery enclosures for a lot of OEMs. They obviously have two big contenders, uh, which are the very first ones they're bringing to market. So they built the battery enclosure for Hummer EV. And on the other side, you can see the aluminum battery enclosure for the F-150 Lightning. So two huge customers right off the bat, and they're developing them for a lot more to come. So you have aluminum for the F-150, steel for the Hummer, and this is just, I mean, it's monster. And uh, fun fact, this the Hummer battery as a whole weighs more than my entire Miata, but it, you just have to have a really intense enclosure to sustain and hold the batteries. Um, they have to be very structurally sound and very protective and sealed with um, like silicone. I don't remember what they seal it with, but. There's a lot of effort that goes into battery enclosures and Magna chose that to be one of their things they specialize in. That thing right there is basically a display talking about the one-stop shop, which is really Magna doing everything. So OEMs can go to Magna and have things built for them. They can contract Magna, Magna to build or design like battery enclosures, for example, ADAS systems, and they can do all of it from start to finish, whether they are introduced to the very beginning of assembly or even like design of the vehicle, or they can come in later and add it after the fact. Of course, they prefer to be involved early on because that makes things more efficient and more cost effective really for everyone involved. But Magna accentuates that they are basically the biggest tier one supplier in North America, number four in the world, and they build so many things. I am personally floored at how much is here. Over here are the seats, and I just got a great presentation from these guys. This, they call this freeform. And essentially what's really interesting is seats typically have like crevices where crumbs and stuff get thrown in and you can never get them out. Vacuums are impossible. And they're almost like, it's almost like seats are after the fact design. They're trying to quote unquote reinvent the seat and actually create a seamless driver experience in this entire area. So anything from like soft materials right here to this, which reminds me of the two series BMW door card, although instead of rough plastic, this is very soft, plush, easy clean material. Feels like it'd be pretty durable too. And what's interesting about leaving these crevices behind is they can just basically sculpt the seat to whatever you need. And even the stitching can be part of your design rather than being functional as far as holding pieces together. So this is important because as a driver, you want to sit in essentially a concave area. And typically what seats are made of is a bunch of convex shapes held together in various forms. So they're trying to simplify it. And instead of using like over a hundred pieces in the seat, make it way more simple. There's actually an ECU inside the seat that they have connected to the pedals, uh, the screen, the mirrors, and even the, the door, uh, the foot thing that comes down, <laughs> whatever it's called. Um, but basically, the idea is that you'll have a seamless experience getting into the car. So if you wanted to get into the car, you could press one button, pedals would move, seat would move. If there was a steering wheel, that could move. Mirror unfolds or folds in. The seat, uh, the foot thing falls down. It's trying to, you know, give the cockpit new life. Magna lights to emphasize their sustainability vision, which includes basically reusing as much things as possible. And they can do that by basically blending down and reusing plastic. And so you have basically fascia and other materials or other pieces made from this post-consumer recycled material. The seats are another thing that uses this. In fact, this seat right here is made from recycled um, 
cotton. So basically cotton that was like melted down. And then this, I think they said was sugar based. Um, fascinating stuff. And then the, the pad inside the seat is basically made from other pads melted down. So it's like the idea is to basically have seats you can entirely recycle to be other seats. Um, so they're trying to get as much as possible. Right now they have like this is 40% recycled cotton and this is 30% uh, recycled water bottles. It's interesting with things like this because there's a safety aspect involved and Magna is trying to push that sustainability emphasis forward. And the interesting thing they're running into is almost fighting like standards, safety standards. And so that's what we're, we're met with in a weird way. And something that me as a consumer and probably many of you don't think about is the fact that there are so many um, standards that just are in place because they always have been. And now we're in this place where we're needing to push through more and more. Um, like what we're seeing with uh, adaptive headlights and laser lights and projection lights, um, where it's the law is in place for a reason, but we need to accelerate those laws and push them forward to make things like this easier to do. It's cool that they're pushing the envelope forward, and it's a bummer when existing standards are what's preventing that envelope from being pushed faster. Magna also makes thermoplastic roof panels, which you've seen on the Jeep. For example, here's one right here. That is a very interesting use case, by the way. A panel sitting on the ground um, using basically integrated lighting, battery, and you could <laughs> take the roof off your Jeep, put it on the ground, use it as a light with which you can change your tire. I love creativity like this. Campsite power, that's rock solid Colorado logic right there. Over in the lighting department, there's a lot of stuff going on here. We have basically flex form which is their um, terminology for lighting elements basically being configured into whatever need whatever way you need them to be so they have an example an older dodge charger light well you know current dodge charger tail light and then a much slimmer one right here in kind of the same profile so flex form is like magna's in-house designed led solution uh, there are many leds actually so like this marquee has over six thousand leds to basically be like kind of like a taxi sign type of thing situation. This is a very thin and flexible, I mean, not flexible in the moment, but they can mold this to whatever shape they need and you can tell it whatever you want to be told. So very interesting use of light here. The lighting over here on the mezzo panel, mezzo is like, uh, I think it stands for middle or it translates to middle, but this is Magna thinking outside the box on what's the future of the grill because the grill is something we've had in gas cars forever because of the necessity of like cooling the engine and such. Now they're taking on a new approach for what can it be used for as a design. So it's very interesting that this is completely smooth, whereas it looks more concave and convex. And I'll throw in some clips right there of the actual lighting in motion. And then over here we have the Luma grill, which is more of those mini LEDs, the flex form LEDs underneath a um, polycarbonate type sort of translucent thing. So you can like mask out whatever you don't want as a form of branding. And then you have the lift, lift gate, which is awesome. It's actually a, a Acura RDX tailgate that they've basically changed to have hidden places of light. So you can't actually tell very easily from the back of course, the camera's picking up a bit more than the real eye is, but it's polycarbonate and there's areas cut out for actual light emission. And then even down here, what's really fascinating is it's beneath the paint. Well, not quite beneath. They actually do tiny incisions in the paint, holes in the paint, and then clear coat over it. But it's a way to get more light off of the off the car for people to see. So you can integrate turn signals or brake lights or any sort of lighting like that, and even your logo itself. So the idea is a thermoplastic lift gate, same thermoplastic technology they use on the roof panels like on the Jeep, and integrates lighting. So they're really trying to do everything, and it's actually pretty cool to see how well they're doing it. 
We also have Magna robots, essentially. Last mile type delivery for delivery of food. This is awesome. Drinks, sides, pizza. Got your priorities straight. And even some little e-mobility type things like scoots. Hoping to get some time with those at some point. There's just so much here and not enough time for all of it, which is uh, the only disappointing part of this, but everything else is phenomenal. So thanks for joining me on this quick tour of the Magna Tech Week. Um, I'm only here for basically a couple hours. Didn't quite get to do everything I wanted, but all I've been able to decide is I need to come back. I really want to rip this track in something high speed at some point. Very fun track, even though it's very slow. Got to take the Arc Fox out for just a little bit. Um, could not film because I was the only one in there, <laughs> um, but it was pretty cool. Um, very smooth and floaty and even had a shifter stock like that of a Mercedes. Um, hoping to spend more time with that car in the future because I'm fascinated. I don't know, what do you think? Should me and Kyle go to China and find all the Chinese cars? Because, I don't know, I in your head you're like, oh, made in China is a negative stigma, but this, made by Magna, made in China, really nice. Quiet, smooth, I'm excited to spend some more time with that car, testing it, running th through all of our types of things. So, thanks for joining. See you guys in the next one very soon.